used word, but I think here we can apply it correctly. All of the dramatic changes in Chile's wine industry can be traced back to a single event in 1978. Spanish producer Miguel Torres set up operations in Chile. He introduced state-of-the-art European technology and brought new impetus to the wine industry. Torres established a new world winery and introduced modern techniques and technologies that ultimately changed the course of the Chilean wine industry forever. Well, in the 78, when Mr. Torres arrived, he realized that the style of the wines were a little bit different from the, what we, what the export market uh, wanted. No? The technology helped us. All the stainless steel, all the new presses, uh, the barrels, but mainly here, I think, is the winemakers and the passion of them to produce a great wine. When you have the technology in favor of the old tradition is when you really can express the potential of the wine. <laughs> French and American investment followed Torres into Chile. Their resources and expertise propelled the industry forward. Every day that passes, you are learning something new, and we are making things better. So these new changes uh, in terms of technology, state of the art in, in all the process, it's been very important. The 19th century was the beginning of Chile's modern wine industry, a foundation for the future. Traditional European influences can be seen in many of the historic wineries and cellars throughout the country. But today, new wineries are emerging. Bold architectural statements, both functional and beautiful. Working within these buildings are a new generation of winemakers and viticulturalists, many trained abroad and ready to make their mark. Young winemakers are very passionate about wines. And in one way or other, they are the people that are pushing this business. They are pretty keen on knowledge. They exchange views with different countries and so on. In the 1980s, uh, the Chilean wine industry wasn't that interesting for professionals. Only in the 90s, lots of people wanted to become winemakers and get into this industry because uh, it started to boom. With the advances in Chile's wine industry, exports were growing. Pushing the boundaries, this new generation of winemakers saw potential in Chile's remote valleys, a potential to move beyond the mass market labels to craft premium and even super premium wines that are unique to Chile. The vineyard landscapes of Chile are always changing. Winemakers are continually looking for new areas to plant vines nearer the ocean and further up the hillside. These new microclimates and soils offer enormous potential to craft wines that are complex and diverse. In Chile we grow grapes from west to east in a roughly 100 kilometers. So you could find a, uh, an amazing uh, diversity of, of weathers, soils, cultures, which make uh, many different wines in, in, in all these areas. And sometimes you have more variation in 60 kilometers from east to west than 1,000 kilometers from north to, to, to south. It's most important if you are close to the ocean than if you are in the north or in the south, because sometimes you have 1,000 kilometers distance, south north, and you have almost the same mesoclimate. Maybe change the soil, but the style of the wine is almost very similar. But if you move in direction to the ocean, it's totally different. The warmest growing regions of Chile are the valleys in the center of the country, the established home of viticulture. But today there's recognition that the cooler areas, high in the hills and closer to the sea, are perfectly suited for cool climate wine styles. The effect of the ocean here is dramatic. Even in the heat of summer, the water is only 10 to 12 degrees Celsius due to the Humboldt Current flowing north from Antarctica. These variations provide Chile's winemakers with a range of mesoclimates. So these are the oldest Pinot Noir. That's right, it is the first Pinot Noir planted in Chile back to 1968. And from where most of the Pinot Noir, which is actually planted in Chile, is coming from. Really? Yeah. By the look of these, they seem to be doing extremely well. Yeah. So yeah. you can grow great Pinot Noir in Chile. We can, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's beautiful fruit. Yeah, because probably when you think about Chile, you think that it's a tropical country. Yeah. But remember that we have the Humboldt current in Chile. So all the areas which are surrounded the Pacific Ocean are quite cold and good for the beachy culture, especially on whites and Pinot Noir. 
Other white varieties like Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Riesling also benefit from the cooling influence of the Pacific. Lo que tenemos y lo que nos hace único es definitivamente la influencia del mar. Nosotros tenemos el mar a 10 kilómetros, 14 kilómetros, y eso hace, por una parte, que sea mucho más fresco, no tanto calor, y segundo, que tengamos una real influencia marina con olores marinos y con gustos marinos. Nuestros vinos tienen una salinidad especial que le da su cercanía con el mar. That is a new plantation. About 80% of Chile's territory is mountainous. It's very steep terrain, but winemakers are achieving amazing success. This is a beautiful view from here. There are some mellow here, you can see. Yes. That is a new plantation of Camanea. Some vineyards are as high as 900 meters and are difficult to cultivate. This is very steep incline for this vineyard. Yeah, but it's the reason for which we, we decided to plant like that and also to have a low production, low yield per plant. That's the future of Clos. Jacques Bejari is chief winemaker at Casa La Postal in the Colchagua Valley. One of the things throughout Chile, it used to be that all the grape growing was down on the valley floor. But now there's a trend to moving up to the hillsides. What's driving that? The aim in La Postal is just to have plants without irrigation. Because okay. the roots are deep enough yes, and, and they, they find their own to, water. To find the, the, good, the right balance okay. and to have enough water when they need water. Okay. So that, mean, that means the terroir. When you have the right balance, the plant can live by itself. That's what it's all about. On hillside vineyards, the vines struggle. The root systems penetrate deep into the soil in search of nutrients, transferring elements of each layer of soil strata to the fruit. This is the essence of quality, capturing a sense of place that the French call terroir. I bring a good wine for you. Fantastic. In the hills, you can control the vineyard. You have a better drainage. You have a poor soils to have a very concentrated grapes. In, in the low part of the valley, the fertility is higher. The, the, the soils are heavier. And as you go into the mountain, you find I mean, shallower soils, more rocks, more granite, and therefore more intensity, more concentration, a bit more ripeness in our grapes. Chile's arid climate is offset by sophisticated water management practices. Rains rarely come during the growing season, and most vines rely on controlled irrigation for success. Water is the lifeblood of the wine industry, and in Chile, it flows in abundance from the Andes. The biggest change is by far the drip irrigation. You could move out from the flat areas to the hills. World-class wine is a product of its climate and soil. And here in Chile, after years of development, a signature style has begun to emerge, setting it apart from the rest of the world. There is definitely a sense of place in every wine in Chile, and it is much more focused on fruit, on clean expression of that sort of purity. The pride is there. Chile makes great wine, and um, it's one of the uh, things in Chile, where we can say this is world class. I think that they are very authentic wines. They represent what the quality of the vineyards and the vines and finally the clusters and the varieties are. It's tried to keep the quality of the varieties in the wines. It's a very authentic wines. The Chile signature wine the style that is quickly becoming their calling card is Carmenere. This ancient Bordeaux grape variety was thought to be extinct, but was rediscovered here in 1994. I am really fanatic of this wine because it's a wine with a great color, fruit sensations in the nose, sweet great body, but soft tannins. In fact, when you have a good Carmenere in front of you, you have perfect wine. <laughs> 
Chile is a country rich in tradition and history. Traveling through wine country, you gain an appreciation for the horse culture that has survived here for centuries. The formal competitions bring out the very best, revealing a lot about the character of the people. They're highly skilled, passionate, and like their winemakers, ready to look beyond the valleys of Chile and show the world what they can do. Looks like you're planted with Pinot Noir here. It's Pinot Noir here and down over there, it's a Gewurztra Mine. Mm -hmm. 